Proceeding to a motion on the increase in the price of food, and we're asking Deputy Clare Curran to move the motion. You have 20 minutes, and you're sharing with colleagues. I am a number of them. Ken Corla, Gurmahagat. Ken Corla, almost two thirds of people in Ireland are to cut back on food spending over cost of living crisis. Working families skipping meals as demand increase at food banks. Food shopping drops as grocery inflation reaches nine-year peak. 62% cutting food spending as prices rise. People putting rent ahead of grocery spend as 350,000 people impacted by food poverty. Almost one in five people living in poverty amid cost of living crisis. And that is just some of the headline after headlines that we are seeing. And those are just from the last four days. We are in a situation today in Ireland in 2022 on one of the richest countries on the planet. And we have people, families and workers who are cutting back on eating. They're cutting back on food. And you actually have to just sit back for a second and think of the implications of that, of households, of families, of workers who are getting up in the morning, who are paying their taxes, and who are choosing to go without, and who have no choice but to cut down on actually eating on a daily and a weekly basis. And, and it is a great shame in this day and age that that is the point we are at right now, today. Research published today from Kantar shows households are cutting back on the amount of food that they are buying. We know that grocery inflation is at its highest level in almost nine years. Prices in supermarkets have rose 5.5% in the last 12 months, and this is the highest rise since August 2013. Coinciding with that is a fall in take-home grocery sales of 6.5% in the last 12 weeks. And that shows us clearly that people are already cutting back and the situation is due to get worse as inflation continues to rise. And these figures reflect data from the CSO, which we have seen, which shows staples like milk, bread and cheese, which have all risen in the last year. We saw an organiser an organiser of a food bank in Dublin today. They're saying that they're seeing record demand. They're seeing full-time workers who are skipping meals and who are visiting food banks with demand for their food bank in Dublin having doubled in recent weeks alone. We've seen research from Permanent TSB showing that over 60% of people feel they will have to cut back spending on food in the coming year due to the cost of living crisis. And we also know that CSO data has shown that groceries will cost an extra €780 Euro over the next year. This is on top of increases in the cost of diesel, petrol, electricity, oil, gas, childcare, rent, the list goes on. And when it comes to poverty, we have a real problem in this state, and it is a problem that is growing. Recent CELC data published by the CSO earlier this month shows an increase, increase right across the board. Consistent poverty, at risk of poverty and deprivation has increased for those aged over 65 and for people with a disability. These are alarming increases. We know deprivation is up for lone parent families to 44%. And these families, of course, already experience sustained consistent poverty rates. We saw a report yesterday from Social Justice Ireland showing almost one million people in Ireland are living in poverty. And it is quite incredible and shameful to think that that is the situation we are in. And no matter what the government say, and, and you'll tell us the budget from eight months ago and everything else, it hasn't been enough. And we've welcomed what's been done so far where we can welcome it, and we acknowledge that. But this motion here tonight seeks a cost of living cash payment. We need to put money into people's pockets, and we need to do it as quickly as possible. And I hope that you'll be able to support this motion. Gurma. Thank you very much, Deputy Mairead Farrell. Ara, we know that the cost of living is rising. We know the severe pressure that people are under to heat their homes, to pay for fuel in their car, to be able to get to work, to be able to do the things, um, the bare minimum that, that most people require to do. But now we really are facing 
and, and a new part of this cost of living crisis, and that being the whole issue of food poverty and the fact that people are finding it increasingly difficult to actually put food on, their, on the table. And we know that over 60% of people are saying that they are now making choices in terms of food. Minister, that is an absolute crisis point. There's nothing, there's no kind of language, there's no kind of um, spin that can be put on this. That is crisis when there's a situation where people can't actually pay for food to put on their table, when they have to make a choice about whether they're going to put food on the table, whether they're going to fill their car, whether they're going to heat their homes or whatever else, that the, the basic necessities that people need to do in life. <clears throat> And that's the kind of thing where you would think that government will say, well, hold on a second, we need to do some action, we need to do it very, very quickly, and we need to do everything that we can to help the most vulnerable in society. And Minister, I know, and I think everybody in this um, chamber will know, of constituents coming in and the huge suffering that they're under because of the huge cost rise in the cost of living crisis. But ourselves in Sinn Féin did put out a survey in relation to um, the cost of living crisis, and just in relation to the actual food aspect of people who have come to us in Sinn Féin saying about how they are really struggling. We had one pensioner saying, I can't live on what's left. I pay my electricity by card and post. I can't afford groceries and eat the bare minimum. Life is very hard. That is reality that people are living in. Then there's another woman in her 40s said that there's a massive difference in her weekly shop compared to a year ago, having gone up roughly by 30 euro. 30 euro is not something that people have at a disposal a disposal to just uh, forget about. That is the kind of thing that makes a difference between the kind of food that they're able to put on their table and the kind of food that they're not able to put in the table, or indeed how much that they can put on the table. Now, Ara, seeing this proposal by Sinn Féin tonight, we are actually here bringing forward constructive proposals as to, to help people who are struggling, to help those most vulnerable. And we have consistently brought forward extremely constructive and credible uh, proposals proposals on how we can tackle this cost of living crisis and we need to be united in this chamber when it comes to this cost of living crisis because that's what people need us to do. So Minister what we're saying is that we need to have the introduction of a cost of living cash payment of €200 Euro for every adult with an income of less than €30,000 and we need to have um, see a payment of €100 Euro for every adult with an income of between €30,000 and £60,000 and that's with a whole range of other issues and a whole range of other proposals that we have put forward but we need this immediate action Minister and it just cannot be let, uh, let fall on deaf ears anymore. We need immediate action to tackle this cost of living crisis to make sure that people can eat when they need to eat. Mm. I sat down today and what I was thinking about writing the speech and what I was going to say um, and I just thought of how difficult uh, an awful lot of people are having at the moment in relation to the cost of living crisis, um, how people are really suffering, they're really finding it hard um, and life shouldn't be hard. If you're working, if you're going to work every day if you're doing everything right, um, you should be able to put food on the table, you should be able to heat your home, you should be able to look after your family, and especially your children. The other day I listened to the Tarnish, they're talking about full employment. But like, where's the full story? What about all those people who are working and who are in poverty? How can this government accept that people are going to work every day and they can't pay their rent, they can't put diesel in the car, they can't pay their electricity bills, they're struggling, people are struggling. But you're listening to the tarnished and the Taoiseach and they say how great things are. For a lot of people, Minister, things aren't great. What we are putting forward here is a constructive proposal. We understand that the government can't do everything. We know that. But 200 euros to people today makes a difference. 100 euros for people who are earning over 30,000 under 60, that makes a difference. It pays a bill. Now, Minister, you talk about the government say about the 2 billion. That was too little. It wasn't targeted at the people who need it. And that's, like, there are people struggling out today, Minister. Uh, I, I was talking to people and they're angry, there are people out there that are angry and they're looking for leadership, they're looking for their government to listen to them and to act. People are intelligent, they know that the government doesn't have a magic wand, but they also know the government should be doing more and you're not. 
What we are saying in Sinn Féin is we are elected here. We are elected by the people, for the people, and we need to deliver for the people. And Minister, we'd ask that you would finally recognise the solutions that we are putting forward, that Deputy Koran has spoke about here today. Listen, we can't sort everything, but we can make a difference if we choose to. And I'd ask you, Minister, and your government to finally realise and listen to people, because people need help, people are hurting, and it shouldn't be like that. Deputy Girk. Thanks, Carla. Uh, Minister, um, we in Sinn Féin are bringing forward this motion on the rise in food prices as we recognise the plight every single worker and low income family are going through at this moment in time. Food prices are continuing to rise, with groceries expected to cost almost €800 Euros more over the next 12 months. New research has found that 62% of people feel they will have to cut back on food spending over the coming year, with increasing concern that the rising price of food and groceries is forcing many families to go without and is evidenced by the steep increase in the number and range of families now seeking assistance from charities or food banks. The cost of living has risen so much now that people are choosing whether to skip a meal or two just so they can pay utility bills or the rent. Spiralling housing costs are pushing increasing numbers of people into poverty, with lone parents and people with disabilities and renters depending on, on housing supports the worst affected. Data published by the CSO this month states that the overall poverty rate in the state when housing costs are included is 19%. 952,185 people, almost 1 million people, 1 in 5 of the total population in poverty. Just look at my own constituency of Mead West as a prime example of what is wrong. Just last week, the ESRI report showed that a lone parent with two children earning 25,000 per year living in County Mead will pay €450 Euro top off on HAP to their landlord compared to same family living in neighbouring counties paying 252 or in other cases 226 euros. That is an additional 2,500 euros per year for a lone parent with two kids in County Mead or an additional 10% of their total income. Surely this is not right or fair. The HAP system is out of date and hasn't been updated since 2016. We in Sinn Féin want to help families who are stressed with bills. We will put a month's rent back into renters' pockets. We will reduce childcare fees by two thirds. We would increase the minimum wage and social welfare rates. We would establish a discretionary fund to help households with utility bills. I, I would call on you, the government, to introduce these measures as a matter of urgency. This wouldn't even go close to what bills people have, but it would help ease some of the stress they are going through. The cost of living crisis is getting worse by the day. People are being crippled financially by the rising costs of groceries, petrol, childcare, rent and heating their homes. Food prices have increased by nearly 4% in the first three months of this year. Now, we understand that the crisis is global, but we need to do what we can to help the people now. Food banks are seeing more and more people turning up looking for help every week. And new research by the permanent TSB found that 62% of people feel they'll have to cut back on food spending because of the rise in costs. Now, the government claim that you feel the people's pain, but you're clearly out of touch and you're failing to grasp the real challenges that families are facing. People are struggling week to week and having to make decisions about whether to heat their home or to put food on their table. Now, we in Sinn Féin have brought forward a packet of measures which would help people who are at their wit's end, and the government could act on them with a stroke of a pen. Government could introduce a cost of living cash payment today. 
It would see those earning less than 30,000 receive 200 euros, while those earning between 30 and 60,000 would get 100 euros. And this is all part of a package of proposals which would seek to tackle the cost of living. And proposals like putting a month's rent back in renters' pockets and relaxing the rules around exceptional needs payments, as well as making more access, reintroducing the access to the CWOs. Now, government needs to get a handle on this. Families are struggling, and Minister, they can't wait for your budget in October. Help is needed, and it's needed in the here and the now. Ministers must do all in their power to protect people from the sharp edge of these increases and help them to keep food on their table. And I welcome the opportunity to speak on this motion. The cost of living crisis is causing serious financial hardship for ordinary families and workers. Some of this is beyond the control of the government, but some isn't. And this evening, Sinn Féin is proposing one solution that would provide some relief for, uh, and a much needed break. So, in response to the most recent surge in the cost, uh, in the cost across the food sector, we are proposing that those earning less than 30,000 would receive that once-off payment of €200, Euros, while those earning over 30000 and under 60 would get €100. Euros. No one should face that choice between uh, whether to put food on the table or paying essential bills. The proposal we have is an attempt to, to, ease, the, to uh, eat, ease the pressure on those most financially exposed. Sinn Féin is also calling for other cost-living solutions to be implemented. These include the introduction of a living wage, a rent freeze and a tax rebate of 8.5 per cent, equal to one month's rent. And you have, this government has done nothing for renters, the most hard pressed section. We want the establishment of a discretionary fund to help with utility bills and a cut in childcare costs. We also need to go further than this. We need to start addressing the causes of inflation and what can be done as a country to protect people from external supply chain issues. A lot of our food is imported and is transported very long distances, which results in more energy being used and costs being increased. Secondly, supply issues and global conflicts are, causing, are driving up prices. The uncertainty and breakdown in production and supply lines are making, making the supply of some products very problematic, Minister. Part of the solution to inflation and supply issues is more localised production, and it's only part of. So we need, to, need therefore, to see greater investment and focus in organic farming. Uh, which only makes up a very small percentage, 1.8 per cent, of all agricultural production, despite the fact that we have a target of 7.5 per cent. We also need to start examining, re-examining the production of sugar in this country and flour. 80 per cent of our flour is imported and 100 per cent of our sugar, despite the fact, and you know this, despite the fact that we had a state industry uh, producing that uh, less than two decades ago. The government needs to establish a working group to assess the viability of re-establishing jobs or re-establishing those, those industries and establishing jobs in these key industries. That should be the long-term plan. But the short-term plan, Minister, is to implement the Sinn Féin, uh, the Sinn Féin proposal here this evening. Thank you. Thank you, last part. Minister, the cost of living is out of control and families under real financial pressure. Food costs are soaring and people's income are staying the same. Every day people in my come into my constituency office on the Neilstown Road and they're struggling. And it's not just with the cost of living. People are struggling and contacting my constituency with the housing crisis, be that the lack of housing, be that the sky high rents, be that the thousands of people who are languishing on never ending public housing lists. There are also 10,000 people who are now homeless, or thousands of these children. We're well, back to 2019 measures, 2019 levels under this current government. We have countless of, uh, parents who are desperately trying to access care for their children, children left on waiting lists for speech and language, occupational therapy, psychology. We have, in front of the Children's Committee this year, we had the Qualified Food Bank from my area minister that came in and said that people are accessing the food bank because they have to pay privately to get care for the children that should be provided publicly. And this is an absolute disgrace. Ordinary workers and families are exhausted. And this is before the cost of living crisis has hit them. No one should ever have to face the choice between putting food on the table or paying their rent. 
People are under real pressure, and Minister, this government has to act. You have to listen to ordinary workers and families. This Sinn Féin motion that's brought here today, and I want to commend uh, my colleague Claire Coran for bringing it forward, is a simple motion. It's putting money back in the pockets of the people who are mostly affected by the cost of living crisis. This would give workers and families a break. This would give workers and families the ability to be able to breed, to be able to for food on the table and the ability to be able to go and recharge their batteries and go and fight all the other stuff that this government has put on them that I mentioned already. Sinn Féin is not one solution, we have a raft of solutions, including putting a, a month's rent back in people's pockets, cutting childcare costs by two thirds. And this would make a real difference to people in the here and now. Minister, we need to listen to ordinary workers and families. We need to hear what they're saying and we need to start putting the measures in place. And it's up to you as the government to act on this. Go on, Margaret. Uh, Minister, I was listening to your speech there and, and while you know, the government may say that they're doing everything they can to assist people, the reality is for very, very many out there that assistance is not reaching them. And that's the experience that I come across every day of the week, and I'm sure yourself and many other deputies come across the very same experience. I had a lady into my constituency office last week, and I'll call her. She has two children. Uh, she's renting, uh, and a couple of months ago she was in because the place she was renting from, the landlord had to, was selling the house or said he was selling the house, and she had to leave, and she went to somewhere else, and that resulted in a 35% increase in her rent because the particular place she had to go was either a place that wouldn't take half at all or get nowhere. And that's where she ended up, in the place that wouldn't take half at all. And now she's in a situation, she's working in a fast food chain, she's on minimum wage, she's trying to raise two children, she's got one of them has in the autistic spectrum and all the costs and additional costs that come with that. And her experience is the same experience of thousands and thousands of others around the country who are in desperate situations. And the cost of living crisis is really grinding them into the ground. This particular woman told me that there are some days of the week that they eat beans because there's nothing else. Because if she doesn't do that, she won't have enough to pay the rent. And that's a situation, I think, you know, that we have to address. And we have to find means of addressing that, not by saying, go into the community welfare officer. She's gone to the community welfare officer several times, when there were several crises, and she can't keep going back there. And she knows that, because she'd be refused if she keeps going back there. And the reality is that we cannot treat people in this manner in this country. We have to recognise that poverty is something that's real for these people. And the only way we can deal with it is ensure that we have adequate support for them and ensure that we can progress these, these many, many thousands of people across the country into better employment where they have proper wages and they're paid better. And we need to ensure that we can do that. You can talk about the minimum wage going up. The reality is for very, very people, the minimum wage is a trap in poverty for most of them. And that's just a reality that we need to recognise. Now, Minister, you, you also suggest that, you know, the, the, and particularly in regard to the fuel allowance and all of these things, most of those are for people who, unfortunately, are on social welfare and have no other option but to be on social welfare. But I also, and indeed all of us also, meet many, many people who are not on social welfare, who can't get on social welfare because there are no paid jobs, and they are in a trap also, trying to raise a family, trying to pay mortgages, trying to pay rent, and caught in a situation where they simply can't get out of. So, Minister... What we need to see here is we need to see action from government. We've put forward firm proposals, and what government needs to do is embrace those proposals. You say you're supporting this bill, Gourmet. support it by implementing it. My good, uh, last count, Corla. I want to commend my colleague, uh, Chuck Declare Coran, not just for this motion, but for all of the work that she has done to highlight the lived reality of people who are in this state under your government. Uh, Minister, you can't pretend that you don't know there's a problem. You've acknowledged that there's a problem. What you're saying to people is, just hold on there now. Something will be coming for you in October. People cannot wait until your budget. They cannot wait. They need urgent action now. And Minister, it was yourself who advised people to shop around. And I think you have acknowledged how hurtful that that comment was for people struggling to make ends meet. But I want to quote to you from Katrina Redmond, who's a food writer. She says, if you're on a tight budget, you're already buying own brand products. In most, case, most cases, you'd be hard-pressed to find a branded item in your basket. 
if, the if you take home 500 euros a week, but you need a full tank of petrol to get to and from work, which costs 65 euros a fill this time last year, but costs 98 euros a week this year, that's 33 euros less you have per week. That's 1,716 euros per year before you go shopping, even if you shop around. Something has to give. And it's not the question of the price difference between Brennan's bread and a value loaf, let me tell you. Families are going hungry today. Families are going hungry. So, Minister, I listened to your speech. I especially like the part where you said the government has not been found wanting. And I would love you to take that message to the people that I'm in here to represent who are making the choice between heating their homes and having food on the table, putting fuel in the car to get their kids to school versus being able to pay their utility bills. They know that you have been found wanton because they are living with the reality of what you have done and how much you have been found wanting. So instead, Minister, of trying to explain to families that there's no problem or that somehow they are at fault, I would urge you to listen to the lived reality of people in your community and in mine. They're struggling now. They can't wait for your budget. Minister, workers and families across the state in my community in Cork simply cannot catch a break. They're having to make incredibly difficult choices, choices that no family should have to make, between paying a bill or putting food on the table. And that is an issue that is going to rise further up the agenda as time goes on, between turning on the heating or filling the car to go to school or to work. For months, we've been urging this government to act on the cost of living crisis. The cost of living crisis didn't arrive yesterday or the day before, far from it. We've been talking about it for months, because it isn't just about fuel. It's about childcare, it's about rent, it's about all the additional costs that families have to fork out for because we don't properly fund our public services. We've been urging the government to act on this. Instead, we're faced with a government minister telling them to shop around and stop complaining. Shopping around is no answer when childcare costs are akin to a second mortgage. It is no answer when rising food prices will affect every retail outlet and energy prices the same. It will do nothing for runaway rents or for the back to school costs on families this summer in the hundreds and often over a thousand euro. It speaks volumes that in some areas we have seen a Tory government in Britain moving to address the cost of living crisis. Um, to a greater effect than the any movement from Fine Fáil and Fine Gael. The government needs to stop dragging its heels. We need to get cash into the pockets of workers and families who need it. Current government ministers have made uh, much of social welfare supports available. Current social welfare ma rates are not matching with rising energy and food prices. Uh, and the majority of workers are not benefiting from uh, some of the increases, including in terms of fuel allowance. We need targeted measures uh, for families and workers who need help. We need reductions in the cost of home heating oil. We need increased social welfare rates to match the rate of rising prices. We need a reduction in childcare costs, which is crippling families and keeping people back from work. And we need a ban on rent increases. Waiting for budget day will not cut it, Minister. The time to act was yesterday. The next best time is today, Minister. So I urge you to not only pass this motion, but to implement it. Um, thanks, Ask Ken Corlin. First, I want to commend my own colleague, Deputy Coran, as well. I, I really want to focus my points in relation to child poverty and particularly food poverty um, for children, which is a, a major concern. And just to say, it's not a new phenomenon, unfortunately. It's something that we've had for years in this country. And even before the, the most uh, recent increases in the cost of living, the Children's Committee uh, were looking at the area of child poverty, and we had people present. Um, about the increase in the use of food banks and just to say that the impact that this would have for children when they're not getting access to proper basic meals, like that's three meals a day, and that is the reality for so many uh, families and so many children. And let's just think about that for a second. How would any of us feel if our own children or our fam family's children were going to school hungry or going to school with no lunch, or in some cases, parents maybe making the decision not to send their child into school that day because they know they don't have the, the lunch to put in their bag and they don't want them to be embarrassed. 
when they get the notice maybe about a school trip coming up and all of those costs have increased. There is so much pressure on children then to try and pretend like everything is okay in their world when actually they are really, really struggling. And the impact that this has on them, first of all, if you're not getting adequate food and adequate nutrition, we all know that's not good in terms of learning. If you're going in cold, um, if you're trying to do your homework where there's not adequate heating, where you're, you maybe don't have access to, to um, all of the things that you need in terms of broadband and everything else. That so many things, so many people take for granted now. So I just think we really need to stop for a second and actually think about, we're, we're talking about children here. We're talking about really young children seriously struggling and parents under serious pressure, uh, you know, heartbroken that they actually can't provide food and uh, facilities for their children, maybe the right books, maybe the right uniform, um, coats, shoes, and that's, you know, as basic as, as it's getting. And we're talking about Ireland in 2022, and that's what we're talking about. I want to challenge in the 20 seconds I have left the point that 38% of people have saved at least half of their childcare costs. I would love to know who they are and where that figure is coming from, because I totally dispute that. And I want to make a point on the CWOs, an excellent service, a great service. However, it's not actually for everybody. Often, if you're in any sort of employment, whether it's part-time or a few hours a week, you will be told you do not qualify for a CWO payment. It's as simple as that. So to say that people can go regularly to the CWO, very many people, and how we know it is because people are coming to our constituency offices asking us, will we contact the St Vincent de Paul for them? Because they've already tried the CWO. Thank you, Lasken Carla. Just 10 minutes remaining. Uh, Deputy Morris Quinlevin and Deputy uh, Pierce Doherty. Um, and, okay, Deputy McCarthy. Yeah. Okay, thanks. So, uh, two and a half, two and a half, and five. Yeah. Okay. Great. Perfect. <clears throat> thanks, Minister. Uh, the cost of living is affecting people from all walks of life. I don't have to tell you that. People are struggling. Be it the rising cost of rent, the cost of trying to buy a house, the price to pay for fuel, the rising cost of food. Social justice has found that almost one million people are living in poverty in this state, while the CSO predicts a dramatic rise in the amount of money that people must spend on food over next year. The CSO estimates that an additional €780 Euros will be spent next year by consumers on groceries due to the cost of living. For those on lower incomes and those dependent on state support payments such as the old age pension, this is a huge increase. When it's coupled with other ex ex excessive prices being spent on electricity and gas, it is an increase that cannot be managed. People in my own city often turn to DePaul, Simon Community and the wonderful community centres we have across the city. For instance, since munchins, some munchins on the north side of Limerick prepare and ensure that hundreds of meals are distributed in the city across the, and across the region every single day. While this was very evident during the pandemic, the work goes on daily. People would be lost without these vital community services. They would literally be going hungry. People are looking to this government for solutions or support. Very little, little of either has been offered. The government has often been far too slow to react. Rents have been allowed to spiral out of control, with 14.1% increase experienced by renters in my own city of Limerick. Childcare and energy costs are through the roof, and the government response has been haphazard, haphazard, untargeted and unambitious. We have called time and time again for the government to introduce supports for households that are struggling with rising costs. We want to see those struggling aided by the state with a real intervention, and we want to put workers and families first. I Minister, mean, in the short time I have, I just want to uh, refer to some comments that the Minister for State, <coughs> at Department of Finance, John Fleming, made. And I was not surprised to hear the Minister say it earlier, because often I hear ministers saying that people can contact their local community welfare office. We often hear that from government. I can tell you exactly what will happen when that happens. Firstly, the staff would be overwhelmed with the number of presentations they get. The staff tell me this happens every time a minister sprouts this in the doll or the media. And secondly, little if any payment would be made to them. So could the minister please and his colleagues do us all a favour and stop trying to be behind the fig leaf of pretending that going to the community welfare will be a solution is not. It never works. It ne often never works. And the truth is that food is just the latest necessity to see substantial price hikes, and that's not an accident. Farm input costs have been increasing dramatically um, for several months, indeed, for over the past year, and government have failed to, um, to act adequately. And you were warned that this would happen if you didn't act. On one input, one very important input, fuel, 
costs have actually been rising, and there's international factors at play. But you, you in government, actually forced higher prices. When government increased the carbon tax, you increased the cost of producing food. When you increased the carbon ta tax, you increased the cost of transporting food. What happens here, presto, of course, food prices have soared. And then we hear a government minister tonight telling us that government will not be found wanting. You have been found wanting on every single parameter when it costs, comes to the cost of living crisis that so many workers and families are going through. On rents, we have advocated for years that we need to freeze rents and put a, rent, a month's rent back into people's pockets. Government have refused to act. On mortgages, we actually had the Taunashta, Leo Varadkar, calling for the European Central Bank to intervene, essentially calling for an interest rate hike. On childcare, um, one of the huge costs facing many families, no action has been taken to date. On energy, we've seen token measures, a €200 Euro rebate that was wiped out before it was even implemented. On fuel, you give with one hand in terms of minimal excise um, reductions, but then you take with the other, again, through increases in the carbon tax. On heating costs, you've done nothing whatsoever in respect of home heat and oil, other than, again, to force the prices higher through carbon um, taxes, and then with your harebrained ideas to actually ban some sources of home heating. And then on food, the huge costs that people are now enduring, again, um, partly as a result of this government's failure to act, and what is so far being proposed to support families with rising food costs, nothing as of yet. And listening to the remarks of ministers tonight, I don't think anyone can have confidence that this government either gets the scale of the crisis that people are facing or has any intention of acting appropriately. All this debate has reaffirmed to me, and I think to anybody watching is that it is absolutely time for a change. It is time for the policies that Pierce Doherty and Claire Curran and the Sinn Féin team have put forward. It's certainly time to get this government out of office. It's time, I have to say, Cahirlach, for Sinn Féin to actually provide the supports that our families and workers so desperately need. I want to thank everybody who contributed to the debate and particularly to commend Deputy Curran for tabling this motion and for championing this issue on behalf of hundreds of thousands of workers and families who, Minister, are continuing to struggle in the face of a cost of living crisis. They're seeing it in terms of the price of food, they're seeing it with energy, they're seeing it with other essentials continuing to rise, and they see their bank balances are struggling to keep up with the weekly shop and with the monthly bill. And some have already been forced to Made choices, choices that nobody should have to, be made, have to make, and that is whether to eat or whether to heat. Cutting back on food shopping uh, and, and, and trying to spare uh, the electricity in your home because the money simply just doesn't go far enough. And for everyone, there is an income squeeze for most people. Some people benefit from inflation. For the vast majority, there is a squeeze. In the doll last week, the Tonishta contended that the entire world is facing a cost of living crisis. But the reality is that not everyone is facing a cost of living crisis. Lower and middle income families face a far higher bill in living standards and a fire, higher fall in living standards than the wealthiest in society. Cutting back on food and fuel and other essentials is a crisis. Having to cut back on luxury items is not. And the government simply do not understand the financial strain that ordinary workers and families are under right across this state. Because if you did, if the government understood it, if they really got it, they would have responded properly and with greater urgency than they have. But they haven't because they don't get it. And that's the simple fact. In the past year, inflation has reached more than 8%. For lower and middle income households, it's a way above 8%. And they now see food prices rising, essentials go up in, their super, in the supermarket, and they're feeling it right in their pocket. The prices of food staples like bread and meat have gone up by over 5%. What, uh, pasta and milk have increased by 10%. And some claim that people are living beyond their means. In fact, too many don't have the means to live. And that's the reality and the need help from a government who is tone deaf uh, to these pleas. To date, the government's response have been totally inadequate. Despite the high levels of inflation, inflation that figures that we haven't seen in decades, this government has refused to increase working social welfare.
rates. That is a disgrace, Minister. And for the Green Party to be in government and allow those people who depend on those fixed incomes to become poor in the right in the light in light of inflation at over eight percent, you should you should quit your jobs now because it is a disgrace that you have left people struggling in that way. It's a shocking dereliction of government's duty to protect the most vulnerable. You said that your measures were targeted. Don't take my words for it. Take the IFAX word for it. A billion euro of targeted of measures, sorry, since the start of this year. 893 million of them were untargeted, untargeted measures, and you left those most vulnerable in society without any support whatsoever. When it comes to energy prices such as home heat and oil, you're making things worse. You're increasing the costs on families out there. And despite multiple calls from us, motions from us on this side of the House, amendments that we've tabled down, you have, like, like the, the, one after the other, the Greens, Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael come in here to vote to increase the cost of living on people by pushing up carbon taxes, excise duty on these same families. The Taoiseach recently doubled down on the government's refusal to introduce measures to support households until at least October. Now, like even the Tories, even Boris Johnson understands that his government needed to act in a targeted fashion to protect those most vulnerable. The fact that Fianna Gael, Fianna Fáil and the Greens still don't get it, still are more out of touch than even Boris Johnson and the Tories screams loudly. But let me say this, Minister, it isn't too late to act. And that is why we have a motion down here. And you say you won't uh, oppose the motion. That's not what we want from you. We want you to act on the motion. The motion is very clear. It screams loudly to the concerns, the plights, the needs of hundreds of thousands of people across this state. It is recognising that not everybody can be protected from every pricing Increase, but the government can and must do more. And that is why we are calling on you to introduce a cost of living cash payments to provide immediate financial support to those on lower and middle incomes. Sinn Féin are proposing cash payments of €200 Euro for every single adult in this state on incomes less than, less than 30000 and €100 Euro for incomes between 30 and 60000 along with another suite of measures that we have proposed, such as freezing rents and putting a month's rent back into renters pockets, increasing core social welfare rates to keep in line with inflation, cutting the cost of childcare, introducing a discretionary uh, energy fund which is needed. And just listen to St Vincent de Paul and none of this balderdash from the Minister saying that one already exists. One, the dogs in the street know that that is not what's needed. Vincent de Paul are arguing for this amendment that is before us. You should not only support the amendment, you should get off your backsides and you should implement it and get your heads out of the sand when it comes to the cost of living crisis that workers and families are facing right across this state. I, I now call on Deputy Claire Coran to clo close the debate. Oh, that's it okay? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Fair enough. So um, the question is that the motion be agreed to? Agreed. 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 Thanks,